Okay, so let me show you some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of my Sony camcorder. I'm not gonna do a real big detailed review on this. You could probably go over to some other platform and find that review but I wanted to point out some of the things I absolutely love and cannot live without with my Sony FDR AX53. Now, there are different models that are within the AX range, so you have to be careful which one you get. This one is the 53 one, you can see there. Now, I absolutely adore this camera, and I'll tell you the reasons why I like it, and some of the things I don't. And I'll try and put a few screenshots of the features I'm talking about on the camera now, because I'm actually filming on the camera now, so it's a little bit difficult to show you it. Obviously, I can just show you the box, but the actual footage you are seeing now is from the Sony camcorder. So some of the things I absolutely love and the reason why I use this camera is because number one, the zoom quality. The zoom is phenomenal. I've seen some cameras four or five times more expensive than this that do not have the same quality of zoom. This camera I use on the golf course. I do golf videos and I do golf vlogs and I can zoom over 200 yards away with this camera and pick up the flag in the distance. The quality of the zoom is absolutely fantastic. One of the negative things about the zoom though is it is a little bit tricky to get it zooming in smooth. You can control the speed that it zooms in and out, but it is a little difficult to get that absolutely spot on. But yeah, the zoom is absolutely incredible. It picks up the minutest detail from very far away. The next thing I like about it is the simplicity of the use. It is pretty much a pickup point and record. It is as simple as that. Again, I've had other DSLR cameras like the Sony M50, everybody says you need to get. And the settings and the controls and the cull and the contrast, to get it right, the settings are just too, it's too much work for me. I just wanted something that I could just take out of my golf bag, point, hit record, and it's perfect quality. And this is it. Obviously, there are settings on the Sony camera that you can use, but this is literally pick up, point, and shoot. The next thing I like about it is the LED screen. Well, it's a love and hate relationship. I'll come to one of the negatives on the screen in just a moment. But I love the fact that the screen turns round all different angles and I can see what I'm filming from behind the tripod or in front of the tripod. For instance, now I'm looking at the screen that I'm recording. I can see how much height there is in the screenshot and it's just really good to have that screen there. It's also very bright, so on a bright sunny days outside, I can still see the screen. Some of the negatives on the screen, sometimes when I turn it facing me, as I'm doing now, the screen flips and you see yourself upside down, and sometimes you have to just wiggle the screen to activate the sensor so it calibrates that it's facing forward. It's just a little bit annoying, it doesn't happen all the time, but occasionally I have to put it into position, wiggle the LED screen up and down until it actually senses, ah, the screen is facing forward, and then it picks that up. Now in bright light, you can actually get a screen protector that goes round the screen as well. That's quite helpful if you're in real direct sunlight. I do have one for this, but I'll be honest, I don't use it that often. If I really want to frame a shot and it is in bright light, I will use an LED field monitor. I use the Port Keys 5 inch LED color monitor, and that goes on top of the Sony AX53, just on a cold shoe mount, and it's really, really good. Then I've got a nice five inch color screen to look at, so that's really good. The other good points are the battery at the back. You can actually get different size of batteries, obviously to last longer or shorter. The smaller batteries obviously are all light and it makes it a little bit easier but obviously you don't get as long with filming. Now, when I put a larger battery on the back, I'll show you the ones I use now, which are a lot wider. The only difficulty I have with that is, yes, it does record for a lot longer, which is fantastic, but when I then put my hand over the back of it to actually reach the zoom button, it is a little bit tricky to do that. So when I've got the big battery on the back, I often have to turn the lens at the front to zoom rather than use the button that's on the top. Now the best part about this camera is the gimbal inside. Basically the lens has an automatic stabilization feature inside it. I'm not very technical, I'm just giving you a few helpful pointers if you're looking to buy this camera. But yeah, I believe it's a gimbal and it actually balances out really well. So if you're moving or walking, I often 
put this on top of my golf trolley and when we're going over the grass and the rugged terrain instead of the lens bouncing up and down it actually stays quite level which is really good. The negative part about the lens though is that you can actually almost touch the lens. It comes from standard with no kind of screen protector or lens protector should I say and you need to buy an extra little attachment that screws on there and it's just a little glass lens that's clear and all it does is it stops you basically being able to tap the lens and damage it or any dust or muck flying into the lens. So before I bought that lens protector, it was a really windy day and I was worried that leaves and debris would fly into the lens. So it's a simple little inexpensive lens protector and I highly recommend you definitely get that and just screw it on the end of the lens. It just gives it that protection so nothing can tap or damage that lens. But that gimbal is absolutely fantastic. And finally, the last thing I like is the actual SD card slot on here. It's very simple to put the SD card in, close the door to lock it in place, and it just never falls out. It's very quick and simple for me to swap and change that. It's in a really nice, secure place. I know some of the Sony range have two SD cards, I don't need one, I've got quite a big memory card on this and I can get three or four hours worth of video recordings on here before I need to swap out that SD card, so it's absolutely fine. So yeah, that's just a quick look at my Sony uh, AX53, absolutely adore this. The quality of the zoom is phenomenal, the ease of use is phenomenal, the setup of the camera is basically non-existent. I took it out of the box, put an SD card in, charge the battery, press record, and the quality is absolutely perfect. And finally, that stabilizing gimbal is a winner for me. It's so far advanced, it's absolutely amazing. Now, the only downside about this camera is whenever I go anywhere and I say I've got a 4K camera and I bring this out of the box, they automatically think, oh, that's a bit of an old fashioned camcorder but it's actually a really quality piece of kit. And I would put this against camcorders four or five times the actual price of this one. So yeah, hope that helps you out. I really recommend it. Don't be a bit of a snob about it not looking brand new and high tech and modern. It is a really good piece of kit. In fact, a lot of my friends are big YouTubers and they actually use this camera because Again, the simplicity, just take it out of the bag, power it up, hit record, you're done. You know the quality and the zoom is going to be phenomenal. So yeah, just a quick view, not very technical review. I'm not a camera expert or anything like that. I've just had a few questions from people saying, what cameras do I use? And I just thought this might help you out. So I hope that does help you out and hopefully you've learned a little bit more about the Sony camcorder, the FDR AX53. Thanks for watching.